Hello everyone, today is 9th of August. My name is Sahil and welcome to the newspaper analysis. Guys, in today's video, we will do the complete analysis of the Hindu newspaper and the good articles from the Indian Express we will also be taking up. Guys, if you like the initiative, please do hit the like button, please to subscribe to our channel. Now guys, starting up with taking up the newspaper overview. So first of all, on to the Indian Express explained section guys, the vaccination has been mentioned, why the silver medal disappoints the, uh, the, the players, it has been mentioned the apple scheme where they will be scanning the devices all such kind of things have mentioned fine however guys much substance with respect to the UPSC is not there and therefore one of the article from the indian express editorial we will be taking securing the indian ocean a very good article with respect to the india's maritime domain we will be seeing it then guys coming to the hindu newspaper so this is the page number one here we can see that the covid shield and covix mix it gives a better protection it has been provided by the icmr so a study has been conducted on some of the people into the Uttar Pradesh who were given first the COVID shield and then the co-vaccine. Co so these were studied and it was said that such accident is rather a kind of a good thing which has happened. However, guys, it has not been provided as a guideline that such kind of thing should be done because the research which has been conducted by the ICMR, it has not been peer reviewed. So you don't go and just take it. Then guys, we see this thing that here, it has been provided by the CGI that the human rights, they are at the risk into the police stations and into this particular capacity, the torture into the custody, etc. We will be seeing it. Then guys, the other issues are not very much important here. Fine. And here guys, we can see that the Taliban had seized three more Afghan cities. Earlier, they were limited to the countryside and every day they are uh, seizing more and more land into the Afghanistan. You don't need to see that what, what cities has been there because it is a very evolving thing. Then guys, we come to the city page, into the city page, the monsoon into the Delhi has been mentioned, nothing important. Then guys, here we can see that the Delhi government, it had ordered the implementation of the GRAP, that is the Graded Response Action Plan. It has been provided that as the positivity rate will be increasing to a particular level, the restrictions will be coming into the place. But as it is a regional news, not nothing very much important with respect to the UPSC. Then guys, here we can see that uh, with uh, the increase into the marriageable age for the girls have been talked about. We will discuss this, uh, the social issues. It is a very important issue because last year, Prime Minister also talked into this particular light. Fine. Then guys, the other issues, not very much important. We reach to the editorial page. Now guys, into the editorial page, this particular article talks about the gold medals that have been won by Indian athletes. Uh, notably, the gold medal won by Neeraj Chopra into the javelin throw, which is a kind of a very momentous moment for the India. It has been just talked about. Fine. However, guys, with respect to the UPSC, much of a uh, substance with respect to the policy, etc. is not there. Now, this article is talking about the RBA's Monetary Policy Committee. Fine, we'll see. Now, guys, this particular article is talking that uh, whether we should uh, phase out the India's old coal plants, it has been provided. Now, guys, this particular article is talking about a kind of a account with respect to the events that has happened into the Afghanistan, a timeline, what USSR did, what US did has been provided here fine with respect however with respect to the india's ir and such kind of things the uh, the substance is very much less then guys this article talks about the sovereign right of india to tax we will see that what has been provided here then guys this particular article it talks about the hurdles for the students who are going abroad due to the uh, pandemic so this is all then guys into this particular page nothing much important has been there here we can see that the russian uh, president uh, uh, putin will be joining uh, the Indian Prime Minister into the UNSC debate that is going to happen. We will discuss that what is this UNSC debate. Fine. Then guys further here we can see that the oppositions they are urging the Prime Minister that they should be given a time. Fine. Now guys when we talk about the present session of the Parliament there are many of the disruptions and on to the fault both the ruling and opposition are there because constructive way are not being adopted. Then guys Further, we can see that the political news, etc. has been talked about. Fine. Uh, basically, it has been provided that the Samajwadi party, if it came, it will be conducting a caste census into the UP. It has been provided. Now, guys, uh, just uh, for the reminder, if you know, we have few days back seen what is this caste census, why it is important and all such kind of things. Now, uh, further, guys, uh, here we can see that the ITBP is inducting the first women officers. We'll see that why it is symbolic. Then, guys, onto the world page. Afga into the Afghanistan, Taliban is capturing the land and all such kind of things have been talked about. But guys, these details are very much evolving. You just read it and move forward. Don't need to go too much into the details. Now, this today is the Monday page. So, on to the Monday, there is money-wise which talks about investing, etc. Not important for UPSC. 
and guys now the tokyos they are coming to an end and we have seen that we have won the gold medal also by the nira chopra into the javelin and guys after 1900 this is the first gold that has come into the first independent gold that has come into the athletic category earlier abhinav bindra also got the gold medal into the beijing but guys athletic it was not the athletic category uh, category so these are the things that has happened and now guys let's discuss these articles one by one in detail now friends starting up with the today's gs quote so today we will be taking a quote from the father of the nation mahatma gandhi ji so gandhi ji had said that restoration of free speech free association and free press is almost the whole swaraj guys we have seen that into the last few months a large number of sedition charges under the section number 124a of ipc have been slapped onto the citizens activists journalists etc now it is not antithetical to the fundamental right rather it is antithetical to the idea of swaraj for which gandhi ji fought the freedom struggle so it has been provided that for a functional and for a substantive and uh, for a elaborative democracy we need to recognize all these particular rights and automatically they will be unleashing the idea of swaraj so that is about the today's gs code guys you can utilize this particular understanding into the answers related to the gs paper number two as well as into the essay so that is all and now let's take the newspaper articles one by one now taking up the first article so guys this article we have taken up from the hindu newspaper page number one and it will be important under gs paper number two law and order as well as under the justice now guys what has happened here the chief justice of india uh, he had flagged the custodial torture that often goes into the prison and had said that the human rights are at the risk into the police stations now guys we have seen many a times that the police had abused the powers that have been given to them for example just a few months back we have say we have seen that a, a fruit vendor he was uh, so brutally he was tortured into the jail for violating some of the covid restrictions that he died and last year we have seen that into the tamil nadu a father and son was tortured into the police and guys such kind of reports they come uh, on regular occasions so therefore the chief justice of india had flagged the human right violations now guys going little bit beyond what has been provided into this article and now let's analyze this from our own angle now guys when we talk about the torture by the police the custodial deaths that are happening into the prisons could be a marker and into this particular direction guys we can take a data from a written reply that was provided into the lok sabha by the former minister of state for the home affairs it was provided that nearly 1700 custodial deaths were registered between april 2019 and march 2020 so these are high number of custodial deaths which are there number two guys when we talk about the national human right commission it has been given a specific mandate that it needs to visit the jails and detention center on to the regular intervals to see that the human right violation is not happening but guys that particular mandate into the letter and spirit has not been completely followed then guys thirdly when we talk about the uh, approach of the police when they are dealing with the prisoners their approach can be defined as the no action or the extreme action approach and in both of these things it is a kind of a faulted approach no action as well as extreme action defeats the basic tenets of justice that have been promised under the preamble as well as the constitution of india further guys when we talk about the police brutalities into this particular respect there is a specific united nation convention also that is the un convention against torture and other cruel inhuman and degrading treatment or punishment now this particular convention guys what has happened india had signed this particular convention at the un but had not ratified now when a country ratifies any particular convention it becomes obligatory for the country that a domestic law has also to be made but as we have not ratified a domestic law is not there moreover guys when we talk about bringing a law in 2010 the attempts were made as the prevention of torture bill 2010 was introduced but it was not passed because the parliament it got dissolved so guys we have seen that actually there is no uh, basically uh, there is no anti-torture law into the india and this particular thing is also ha hampering uh, india on another thing also guys you might be knowing that many a times the people they do 
crime into India and they go to the other countries. Now, if you want to bring criminals back from the other country, you need to have an extradition treaty with that particular country. Without the extradition treaty, you cannot bring back the criminals. Now guys, many of the European countries particularly, they have not signed the extradition treaty with the India because they say that you don't have an anti-torture law what 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 is the guarantee that when you will take these people back you will be giving them the due justice so many a times the extradition it doesn't happens and we have seen that many of the fugitives they have went to the different different countries so guys on all the things basically the torture and all things are having the huge implications so guys please do utilize all these dimensions that we have utilized it so that is all here and uh, into this direction guys you can also suggest that the police reforms are needed to be taken into the account now police reforms are guys uh, have been provided even by the supreme court into the prakash singh case where the seven directives were given however guys the seven directives given into the prakash singh case by the supreme court specifically the element of torture was not discussed there it was about improving the functionality of the police as well as to reduce the political interference so the seven directives given by the supreme court could be just a tent of a reference into the broader scheme of police reforms but guys in order to reduce the torture a kind of an accountability measures of the police are needed to be installed moreover a psychological conditioning of the police officers when they are dealing with the prisoners also needed to be carried because you might be knowing that into the india Policing is carried under the 1861 Police Act which was enacted during the time of the Britishers and at the time of Britishers, police was not envisaged as a service, as a public service, rather it was envisaged as a force but and even till now that hangover is going on. So guys all these convention, all these aspects, all, all this dimension you need to have into your mind. So that is all about this particular article and now we'll be moving to the next article. Now guys this particular article, it talks about one of uh, uh basically it talks about the one of a discussion that had happened into the lado panchayats under in into the haryana state under the ages of the selfie with daughter foundation now guys the selfie with daughter foundation you might be knowing that into the haryana into the jeen district selfie with the daughter campaign began now into the selfie with daughter the fathers they need to pause with the daughter in a and the selfie was to be clicked to celebrate the gesture of the relation of a father and the daughter you might be knowing that haryana has a various a very dubious distinction that there the female feticide female infanticide are very much rampant even the sex ratio of the haryana is very much bad so in order to dispel such kind of things selfie with daughter all such kind of initiatives have started up into the past and guys it has been provided that even the Beti, uh, Beti Bachao, Beti Padao Abhiyan also got impetus from the Haryana's initiative of selfie with daughter. So basically these things are there. You need to keep it into the backdrop of your mind. Now guys, at this uh, selfie with daughter foundation, it has emphasized or it has discussed with the Lado Panchayats into the Haryana that the age of the girls, it is needed to be increased for the marriage. Right now, you might be knowing that we have the 18 years of age for the marriage for the girls and 21 years for the boys. So guys, this suggestion have been there that for both the parity of 21 years need to be brought. Even guys, the last year, the Prime Minister also emphasized that the marriageable age for both girls and boys need to be 21 years. Now guys, first of all, uh, so this is just, it has been provided into this article. Now we will be analyzing it from the, the different, different angles. No, guys, first of all, when we talk about the marriageable age, there is one United Nation Convention that is the U, uh, that is a convention on consent to marriage, minimum age for marriage and registration for marriages. Now, this particular convention came in 1964 and it provides that the countries, number one, they need to specify a minimum age for marriage. Number two, it says that uh, the legal acceptance of any marriage without the full and free consent should not be there. Now guys, when we talk about the India, India had not completely ratified this particular convention, but even without ratifying also, there are the provisions of into the India, uh, into the Indian legislation that goes briefly in line to the United Nations Convention on the Consent to Marriage. Now guys, when we talk about the marriage into the India, there is the Hindu Marriage Act which is there. Moreover, when we talk about specifically with respect to the age of marriage, there was the Sarda Act of 1929. 
no guys the sarda act of 1929 it has also been renamed as the child marriage restraint act of 1989 it provided that the marriageable age for the girls need to be 15 years and for boys it was to be 18 years fine so this was the status that was there into the start at the time of independence now guys you know that the indira gandhi government when the indira gandhi government came it had a major emphasis on to the population and guys into this particular direction the indira gandhi government also came with the national population policy in 1976 because guys if you know the time from 1970s to 1980s 90s it was a population bomb that was exploding into the india at that point of time indira gandhi took some legislative steps also it was provided in 1978 actually the minimum age of marriage it was increased from 15 years to 18 years for the girls and to 21 years for the boys what happened the amendment into the child marriage restraint act was brought fine so this particular thing amendment happened in 1978 after that guys what had happened in 2006 also this child marriage restraint act has been changed into the prohibition of child marriage act of 2006 however the marriageable age has not been changed even into the 2006 amendment so from 1978 the 18 and 21 standard is going on now guys it has been provided that if we see the present state into the country then guys according to the global childhood report that was released by the uk based ngo save the children it has been provided that the child marriages they are highly prevalent into the india's both rural as well as the urban areas it has been provided into the report that it is significantly even higher into the rural areas it has been there that the 14.1% of the marriages into the rural areas and 6.9% of the marriages into the urban areas they happen between the age of 15 to 19 years and guys when we talk about the girls getting married married before 21 years then 35% of the girls into the india they get married before the age of 20 one so it has been provided that now the age needs to be increased to the 21 years now guys into this particular aspect both the negatives and positive points are there now guys first of all when we talk about the positive points it has been said that by this particular step number one the women or the girls they will get a time that they can complete their higher education and the gross enrollment ratio of the girls into the higher education will increase because most of the times girls they need to drop from the education when they get married so they will be able to complete their higher education then guys when the girls marriageable age will be increase it has been provided that biologically girls medic uh, girls health is more uh, conducive to carry a child after the to after the 19 to 20 years so when the 21 year age norm will be there the reproductive health of the women will also increase then guys thirdly it has been provided that it is a matter of equality even under the constitution article number 14 to 18 the right to equality has been provided so why the equality is not there into the age so this particular thing is there then guys fourthly it has been provided that the girls if they will be married at a, a, a higher age of 21 years they will had much more awareness with respect to their legal rights with respect to their fundamental rights etc and add into this particular capacity they will have more decisional autonomy so this particular thing will be bringing the welfare for the women fine uh, then fourthly guys it has been provided that if women will be married at 21 years in meanwhile they'll get educated and then they can also participate into the economic activities so female labor force participation rate also can be enhanced if the women's are if the age is increased and then guys after that it has been provided that india being a progressive state in order to uh, counter the child marriages the marriages which are happening under the lower age brackets that can also be enhanced and it will be a progressive legislation which will send a kind of a progressive message but at the same time guys there are certain negatives also which comes number one it has been provided that increasing the age is not a uh, is not a big issue because the implementation is a big issue even the age of 18 years have not been followed we are having so many of the child marriages so rather for increasing the age focus on to the implementation secondly it has been provided that this increasing of age will further assert the parents control over the girls it has been seen many a times that the, when the girls want to marry as per their own wishes often the parents don't give a sanction and when even without the sanctions girls want to go for the marriage the parents of the girl they have used the provisions under the prohibition of child marriage act and they file a case on to the boys now it has been said that if it will be increased to 21 years for more 3 years more the parents will get a right over the bodies or the decision of 
of the girls so this particular thing is there after that guys thirdly it has been provided that rather than increasing the age we need to educate we need to sensitize the parents we need to sensitize the girls with respect to their rights so these are both the aspects into this particular direction however guys at the sum total we need to say that just increasing the age is not a solution though it can be done but just increasing it is not a solution at the same time behavioral changes the change into the psychology gender sensitization also is needed to be carried moreover government also needs to focus on to the enforcement and implementation so guys these are all the aspects which have been carried into this particular thing and you need to keep it into your mind because it could be a very important issue into your social justice gs paper number two so that is all about this particular article and now we'll be moving to the next article now guys this particular article it has been taken up from the indian express newspaper and it will be important under the gs paper number two diplomacy international issues etc now guys first of all let's talk about the premise of this particular article so guys this article talks about the efforts that india has taken into the indian ocean region now guys what is happening see uh, today a uh, open debate of the united nations security council will be started with the end this open debate into the united nations security council will focus on enhancing the maritime security and this particular debate will be chaired by our prime minister mr narendra modi now guys first of all when we talk about the united nations security council already just a couple of days back we have seen that india had been elected as a non permanent member into the unsc for two years number one number two guys this particular month of august india will be india will be the chairman of the united nations security council so guys under the unsc as this particular open debate on is going on to the maritime security it is being chaired by the indian prime minister you need to understand this thing no guys number uh, number 1 uh, number 2 it also reflects that india has evolved on to the international front as a maritime nation because today if we see the indian uh, the indian ocean it has become a kind of a maritime hub and india's geo strategic position there is always showcasing india as a significant stakeholder into the maritime strategies is fine so this particular india's chairmanship reflect that spirit also no guys it has been provided that the objective of this particular debate is to if uh, to is to highlight that the effective international maritime cooperation is needed in order to respond to the different different challenges or different different threats that are there into the maritime domain guys when we talk about the maritime domain there are the threats from piracy from the terrorism from the unilateral claims from the bilateral disputes there are they are there on to the maritime uh, kind of a territory so all these are needed to be resolved and for that the maritime cooperation is needed guys specifically when we talk about the india for india the maritime dimension dimension is very much important because we are having a coastline of more than 7500 kilometer so the maritime security for india becomes very much important moreover guys when we talk about the indian ocean region india uh, india uh, sits at the head of the indian ocean region and indian ocean region transports 75% of the world's maritime trade and 50% of the daily global oil consumption and therefore this particular region is important and as india is located here find the maritime dom domain of india it becomes a kind of a strategic thing then guys further it has been provided that this particular open debate that is being carried it will focus on to the application of the 1982 united nation convention on the law of seas fine because many a times the united nation convention on the law of seas which happens to be an umbrella legislation onto the maritime domain it has not been uh, it has not been honored in letter and spirit by the countries specifically here you can take the example of the china so guys how the application of 1982 un clause could be there it will also be discussed fine the new challenges by the non state actors terrorist pirates they will be challenged further guys it has been provided that the securing the sea lanes of communication fine it also will be discussed here that how we can secure the sea lanes of communication fine so these are the major themes that will be carried now guys it has been provided that earlier the cooperation had happened specifically into the indian ocean region and that cooperation needs to be carried now into the entire maritime domain of the world guys see this thing in 2004 you might be knowing that there was a very destructive tsunami in which large number of people died after that particular tsunami the indian ocean tsunami warning and mitigation system was installed by the united nation in 2005 and since then the warnings with respect to the tsunami cyclones etc had given uh, uh, under the indian ocean tsunami warning and mitigation system and much of the benefits have come so this is one uh, area where the cooperation has happened 
then guys further it has been provided that as the somalia is the cradle of piracy and all such kind of things in 2007 the united nations security council it mandated a 60 country contact group on piracy around the coast of somalia where many of the navies participate coast guards participate india is also participating in effect in, in this particular contact group and many of the incidences of piracy have been deterred so this is the cooperation that has taken earlier into the indian ocean region learning from this particular template and now even more cooperation is to be attained moreover guys when we talk about the india's effort into the indian ocean region or into the maritime domain it has been very much impress impressive and all the countries need to learn from it for example india came out with the sagar policy that is the security and growth for all in the region now guys this sagar initiative was unveiled in 2015 when indian prime minister visited the mauritius fine so this sagar initiative is there now under the sagar initiative there are five main pillars which are nothing but a kind of a rule book for the maritime cooperation number one it has been provided that into the region india will india will play a role as a net security provider Fine. Secondly, it has been provided that active engagement with the friendly countries into the Indian Ocean region will be carried by India. Moreover, India would continue to enhance the maritime security capacities and economic resilience of all the countries into the region. So, India is projecting itself as a responsible power into the nation. Then guys, thirdly, it has been provided that a, uh, a network will be developed so that a collective action could be taken for en enhancing the peace and security into the entire region. Fourthly, a kind of an integrated and cooperative focus onto the future of Indian Ocean region will also be emphasized by the India. Fine, so that the sustainable development for all the countries could come into the region. Then guys, fifth pillar of the saga is that. Uh, the basically the primary responsibility for peace stability and prosperity into the indian ocean region would be primarily onto the those who are living into this particular region all the time we should not look onto the outside countries so a kind of a resilient sustainable and self-dependent union has been talked in by the sagar initiative fine so this is one of our india's attempt into the indian ocean region after that guys it has been provided that india had also Played a kind, it has given a very important gesture when India accepted a UN clause, United Nations Convention on the Law of Seas Tribunal Award, which actually settled the maritime boundary arbitration between the India and Bangladesh. So basically, maritime boundary was decided by the UN clause. India did not challenge it. India accepted it. What it did, it increased the credibility of the UN clause tribunal because most of the times we have seen that the countries such as China, they are they have went with the unilateralism and the south china sea and the un closed directives they had not followed we had followed we had given a kind of a credibility to the institution as a whole so it is a, actually a kind of an important thing that india has done in order to enhance the maritime cooperation then guys thirdly it has been provided that india's initiative to establish international fusion center for the indian ocean region into the gurugram it is also a kind of an important step that has been taken now guys this indian fusion center it will be administered by the indian navy and indian coast guard and it will be collating large number of maritime domain awareness knowledge and this particular knowledge will be shared on to the real time basis for with all the countries who are participating into this initiative so guys by this particular thing india is playing an important role on to the maritime domain and such leadership role india now needs to play into the united nations security council when the open debate is being taken fine so this is guys all with respect to the role that india had played here fine guys i hope that you have understood it so that is all about this article and now we'll be moving to the next article now friends this particular article it has been taken from the hindu newspaper editorial section and guys it is talking about an, an idea that has now being explored that whether we should uh, remove or we should phase out the old coal plants into the india so the viability of that particular idea will be discussed into this article Guys, this article will be important for our GS paper number 3, issues related to the ecology, conservation, pollution, etc. Now guys, discussing this particular article, what has happened into the budget speech, budget of 2020-21, it was provided that there will be the shutting down of old coal power plants because they are the major contributors to the emission. Moreover, they are uh, having a large number of operational cost. So, remo removing these kind of plants will be helping India to reach number one, the INDCs, that is the intended nationally determined contributions. Secondly, it will also be economical. Now, guys, what are these INDCs? First of all, guys, the INDCs, 
they were decided into the uh, cop that is the conference of party 21 that was held in 2015 now guys under the indc it was decided that all the countries will be taking up some of the target so that they can reduce the carbon emission now all the countries have taken these voluntary targets india has also taken first of all let's see that what are the india's indc target First of all guys, whatever targets are there, they are to be reached by 2030. First target is that the emission intensity of the GDP will be reduced by third. Then guys, uh, it has been provided that a 40% of the installed capacity for the electricity will be coming from the non-fossil fuels. Thirdly, it has been provided that India will uh, provide an additional carbon sink to absorb uh, carbon sink to absorb 2.5 to 3 billion ton of carbon dioxide equivalent i now this carbon sink will be created either by the forest cover or uh, by reducing the emission into the extreme sense so guys these are the indc targets that we have taken now if we'll phase out the uh, the coal based power plant what will happen that emission intensity will be reduced clear guys obviously if these coal plants will be removed obviously the renewable energy power plants will be coming so the 40 percent of the installed capacity that we promised will be coming from the non-fossil fuels that will also be enhanced so into all of these ways we can see that the phasing out of coal plant can help fine so this is one thing now guys when we talk about the coal plants into the india right now the coal fire coal fire plants they have a dominant share into the uh, electricity 72 percent of the share of total generation in 2019 it is coming from the coal plants guys in india we have enormous coal and at the same time oil and gas are very much less so our reliance onto the coal is more and therefore the 72 percent of the electricity generation is from coal no guys further the idea which has been there that we need to phase out the coal plants it has been provided that phasing out the old coal plants it will lead to improved efficiency reduced coal usage and therefore the cost saving will be there now guys it has been provided that there are some issues with this particular decision of phasing out of the old coal plants number one it has been provided that the plants which are older than the 25 years they make 20 percent of the india's total installed thermal capacity now guys as 20 percent of capacity they are providing there might be severe problem into the india's electricity grid it has been provided that it might lead to blackouts in many of the states and guys even today we see that particularly into the eastern india the electricity is not there for the 24 hours and removing them might be mean might might mean that the functional electricity uh, will be impacted then secondly it has been provided that there are some certain old plants which can be economically viable if we install the pollution control equipment into this plant as a part of their fixed cost so by doing that the pollution will come down and economically it will be viable so rather than shutting down such kind of approach can be followed then thirdly it has been provided that the total saving that will be coming from shutting down the coal plants that are 25 years old it will just around 5000 crore rupees annually and this 5000 crore rupees is just around 2% of the total power generation cost so the cost savings are not that much so therefore the shutting is might not be entirely a good idea Idea. then guys next it has been provided that there are several old power plants which are generating electricity at a very less cost for example the plants into the into the Rihand, Singroli, Vidyanchal fine they are the 30 years old and their the cost of generation is around 1.7 rupees kilowatt per hour so basically it is a very less cost it is even less than the national average so shutting down they will be economically a kind of a bad decision so basically into the article the bottom line that has been provided is that we should not have a kind of a one size of it all policy we need to look on to every coal power plant into a different capacity onto the every plant's merits and demerits we need to look and onto the case by case basis we need to take a decision fine and uh, just a kind of a blanket decision will not be good so that is all which has been carried into this particular article i hope guys you have understood it and now we'll be moving to the next article no friends this particular article is talking about a recent amendment or a recent bill that has been introduced into the parliament to remove the retrospective taxation fine so into that particular capacity this article is talking about now guys some of the critical uh, points have been raised we will discuss it by the way guys if you remember just a, a couple of days back we have also discussed this particular article into the detail where the kind dispute word of own dispute all we have discussed however moving into the same direction so guys what has happened 
first of all as i said i told that a, a bill has been introduced into the parliament to nullify the 2012 amendment into the income tax act now friends before this particular amendment was made in 2012 before that the supreme court had given a very important judgment with respect to the vodafone case guys there were basically the two instances the vodafone and the kairn energy incident where indian government had taxed the transactions where some indirect transfer of assets was there so these uh, transactions were taxed and guys the supreme court it provided into the vodafone international holdings uh, versus union of india case that such kind of tax cannot be charged and now in order to overturn this supreme court judgment this amendment was carried in 2012 and specifically parliament provides that it has a power to retrospective the uh, retrospectively tax such kind of transactions so it was provided now guys one thing this happened now guys secondly what is there there is the concept of bilateral investment treaty now guys there is already a bilateral investment treaty that india had signed with the netherlands as well as uk now guys under the bilateral investment treaty it is the there is a provision of the investor state dispute settlement fine now what is this we'll understand this one by one now guys when we talk about the vodafone vodafone was an entity that was registered into the netherlands when we talk about the kyan kyan energy kyan energy as an entity was registered into the uk and both of them they said to the indian government that you have charged the bilateral investment treaty with our countries and under the bilateral investment treaty there is the isds mechanism now it provides that if an investor who had invested into the other country if there is some kind of a contention or some problem comes into that particular investment then there is an isds that is the investor state disputement settlement tribunal where the investor can approach and there the matter will be dealt now guys both the kairn as well as the vodafone they approached to the isds tribunal and said that the tax that is being charged from us it is discriminatory it is unfair and guys in both of the instances both of the tribunals it has provided that whatever government is charging that thing as well as the retro retrospective amendment of tax which has been brought it brings the fair and equitable treatment of the bits that is the bilateral investment treaty so therefore the government cannot ask that particular thing now guys the government was so overzealous that even if i tell you in 2016 india came out with the new bile model bit model bilateral investment treaty and said that all the bits that we had signed more than the 80 bits with the different different countries we need to revoke the we need to nullify them and we will be signing the new bit and guys into that new model bit the it was specifically provided that you cannot approach the isds until and unless all the legal remedies into the country has been exhausted so guys that particular thing also came however that is a different thing no guys what happened this particular thing it has been provided that why though it particular matter has been uh, provided by the isd is that you cannot go why government is so much overzealous so there there is one particular issue guys when we talk about the isds tribunal they themselves has provided this particular thing very clearly that the taxation power is the sovereign right of a particular nation and in many of the cases it has been provided that the country has a right that it can tax fine now the government says that the matter where we have imposed the retrospective tax it comes into our taxation power so therefore we have a sovereign right and the isds tribunal they cannot interfere but guys the isds tribunal as well as these companies they hold this thing that no it is not a taxation matter rather it is an investment matter and the investment matter are covered under the bit and because this is an investment matter we can go to the isds tribunal so this is one of a major contention that is going into this particular direction no guys it has been provided by the isds very clearly that the uh, the uh, fundamental principle that the taxation is an intrinsic element of the sovereign power but at the same time it has provided that there is certain limits on to the state's right to tax number 1 the tax should not be discriminatory number 2 it should not be confiscatory number 3 it has been provided that the state's tax measures would not amount which should, should not amount to the expropriation of the foreign investment now the foreign investor will be expropriated it he will be uh, he will basically be uh, uh, subjugated if there is no legal certainty 
is it clear it there needs to be a kind of a certainty that if i am going into a country what type of taxes i have to pay you cannot come suddenly with a kind of an act and say that from a retrospective effect we will charge the taxation so legal certainty also needs to be there and it has been provided by by the tribunal into the kain energy versus india case that india's right to tax into the public interest should be balanced with the investors interest of legal certainty and when you brought this amendment you brought that legal certainty and because of this thing we believe that the kain they they have basically a right that they cannot pay the tax and they should not pay the tax this particular thing has come no guys when we talk about india i already provided that in 2016 model bit was there into the model bit it was provided that uh, the taxation measures they were out of the scope of the investment treaty so all these things have been done but it has been provided into the article that even if you remove uh, that uh, into the investment the tax matter will not be there even if you remove that they cannot go to the isds still on to the international law whenever there will be the discrimination that will be done by the government it could be dragged on to the various forums such as the international court of arbitration etc so therefore india needs to be mindful whenever they are utilizing these particular things now guys into the lok sabha the bill has been introduced where the retrospective taxation is being removed number 1 however even this particular bill has come guys it has not been provided that the kairn and vodafone will be given the respite to it so this kind of things had happened so guys that is all about this particular article guys i hope that you have understood it so that is all about this article and now we'll be moving to the next article now guys this particular article talks about the recent reserve bank of india led monetary policy committee report that came out into this monetary policy committee report the inflation uh, the basically repo rate has been unchanged at 4% fine now guys it has uh, only such kind of thing has been provided however already on to the 7th july newspaper analysis at the time stamp of 1501 we have discussed this entire matter the entire uh, analysis of the report and what other things have been projected we have discussed it apart from this nothing has been provided into this particular article so guys if you have seen it well and good if not then guys you can just refer to this so that is all about this article and now we'll be moving to the next article now guys this particular article it could just be used as a passing reference that how now the women are being mainstreamed into those of uh, us uh, avenues also which were traditionally believed that they belonged to the men's domain now we can see that the itbp that is the indo tibetan border police force it has inducted the first women officers two of the women officers have been inducted into the combat services now guys earlier into the combat services women were not allowed but after 2016 through the upsc fine into the uh, indo tibetan border police force the women are being inducted have been allowed into the combat forces and now these two women they have been formally inducted now guys it has been provided that this particular thing will be breaking many of the stereotypes and it is a kind of a very good thing that has been done fine and basically they will also be uh, as the itbp's mandate is to man the lac line of actual control so basically their role will be very much important so guys just uh, all the such kind of things have been provided that who was present on to the uh, ceremony etc not at all important guys when we talk about the induction of the women then the itbp started recruiting the women as the combat officers from 2016 through the all india examination conducted by the upsc before that guys they were inducted in uh, as the combat role into the constabulary rank also officer into the officer rank they were not uh, enrolled so this is what has happened here fine now guys i hope that you have understood it and just as an and as an example in you can give the passing reference what has happened here so that is all about this particular article so friends that is all for the today's newspaper analysis guys i believe that you are liking our initiative guys please do support the initiative thank you so much